Today in the crypto space, we see Bitcoin still hovering around that $23,000 level and Ethereum still around $1,600 and the rest of the crypto space pretty much going sideways with a little bit of bearish price action. Maybe we can be buying those dips very, very soon. Today in today's video, I want to look at the general market. I want to talk about Bitcoin as a leading indicator and I have one altcoin that I believe is ready to make a move and we should be prepared for a buy the dip opportunity and that altcoin is called Near Protocol. So you know what? Let's talk about the news, let's analyze the charts, and let's strategize to capitalize. Welcome to the channel. My name is Mike and let's get right into it guys. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Welcome on the channel. We talk about cryptocurrency. We look at Bitcoin. We look at Ethereum and we talk about the general market. We look at these altcoins. We look for opportunities throughout the entire crypto space, whether it be bearish or bullish guys, we want to make sure that we're ready for that volatility to buy those dips and take those profits. And that's the way you make some gains in crypto. And if you appreciate that strategy, do yourself a favor, subscribe to the channel, click that bell button so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. In addition, guys, follow me on all those socials, and I'm also available on Spotify. You know, today was an interesting day because we did get a interest rate hike, uh, 25 to uh, 25 basis points, which is at the end of the day what the market expected, and I believe that the market already priced in that uh, increase in um, interest rates, right? So in that case, the market continues to go sideways. And if you appreciate this uh, analysis here today, make sure that you visit me live, 7.30 Eastern. We can talk more about crypto. We talk about news. We talk about price action. And if you have any other projects that you want to talk about, that is a great place to get involved with the community. And in addition, you can always let me know in the comment section below if there are any other projects you want me to cover on the channel. But of course, we see that Bitcoin is not really moving much. The news, the Fed news about the interest rates didn't really make Bitcoin flinch. And I think that it already priced it in. The only thing that we need to be aware of is that instead of going 50 basis points, we only did 25. So it seems like the Feds are trying to kind of slow down the inflation rate by also, you know, slowing down the interest rate, you know, and, and we have been getting higher interest rate hikes uh, in in previous um, announcements, but just recently we're slowly, slowly, slowly tapering off, which is good because maybe we can start seeing our bottom. And I believe that the market will uh, anticipate this tapering uh, a lot sooner and we'll see a reaction in the markets a lot sooner than when it actually happens in real life. When the feds actually stop increasing interest rates, I think the market will already have priced it in and anticipated it. So this is why DCAing at the bottom of ranges is perfect because you don't know when the exact bottom is, but the market tends to want to find the future value of an asset, right? Especially when, you know, we have systematic announcements this way and probabilities and statistics to go off of, right? And right now, Bitcoin still going sideways, Ethereum going sideways, and the market in general is still going sideways. However, there are some pullbacks in those altcoins. Look at Dogecoin pullback i was going to make the uh, a video on dogecoin but i just covered it and of course i anticipated this dip go check out the, when did we talk about it just a few days ago uh actually 22 hours ago it was yesterday and we anticipated it, it was definitely definitely overheated and i anticipated a pullback however dogecoin at the end of the day given um the fundamentals and you know elon and all that we could get another bounce and and, and continue to the upside so just be very careful with the volatility that Dogecoin offers, right? Um, at the end of the day, we see, uh, sorry, we see uh, Cardano still kind of chopping, going sideways within this range, and Bitcoin is doing a very, very similar pattern, range bound, and we're gonna look at Bitcoin very, very soon, guys, so make sure you watch to the end, because then we're gonna talk about near protocol. Uh, what else, OKB pulling back? Uh, I like OKB, I might buy the dip on that one earlier. Uh, Cosmos, Adam, another little rally to the upside, which is really good, breaking out of previous highs. That's an, uh, a really good chart right there. Let's see where we get resistance. Um, Chainlink, pulling back. That's a good project to be keeping our eyes on, definitely on Chainlink. When I see these pullbacks, guys, expect an update, expect a video update telling you where I think I'm going to be buying the dips because at the end of the day, accumulating that good risk to reward ratios is what we're going to try to do here. We're not buying tops. We're patiently waiting. 
to buy at good areas. I like the Algorand chart, chart right now. We could get a little bit of a bounce right here. This double bottom with some bullish divergence. I'm not sure, guys. It could be a temporary bounce here and then a continuation to the downside. Hedera Hashgraph, double bottoming. So some altcoins are actually looking like they could be rounding off for a little bit of a pump to the upside, short-term pump, especially if bitcoin continues to go sideways in the in the next little while we could expect all coins to continue rallying because that's usually what happens when bitcoin going sideways we see that all coins take advantage of the boring bitcoin market and that's when you see all coins pop and they have a little bit of a season we haven't really got a, a true and true um, all coin season just yet we have seen some good all coins pop up definitely but nothing really um, where we've seen altcoin season before where they really rally hard. Phantom getting a little bit of a pullback. I like Phantom looking for buy the dip opportunities there. And I'm wondering how the rest of the day is going to play out because, of course, the uh, the FOMC meeting, you know, did come out pretty in neutral in my book, pretty neutral. Uh, the only hawkish part of it is that um it was mentioned that they they anticipate that future interest rate hikes will um you know are planned for the future so maybe in march we'll get another 25 percent who knows how many maybe they'll just you know dabble in at 25 percent until we reach about five percent base five percent interest rate which is very very possible and i think the market is starting to price that in as well think about it pricing in that potential area of five percent is definitely a viable scenario so Consider that maybe the market might pull back with that anticipation or just take a break while we accumulate and anticipate that potential uh, interest rate hike. Um, what else? And again, the market is very, very forward thinking. So we got to anticipate all of this. What else do we see? Any good IOTA pulling back? Looks like it's trying to break down more. Uh, Rweave, we talked about Rweave. When did we talk about Rweave? Just to keep myself, we went live yesterday and we talked about Rweave. Holy smokes, Rweave was listening. I, I really want to take a look at that. Maybe we'll take a look at it tonight again, this evening, 7.30 Eastern. You're more, more than welcome to join me live. We'll talk about some of these charts. Rweave looked great. A nice opportunity there for a nice little pump. And here we are. Uh, Immutable X looking like it's pulling back trying to pull back a lot of these coins we cover live and that's what i like about going live is that i take your suggestions i look at the top gainers the top losers of the day on coin gecko and we basically take a look at you know if there's an opportunity if there's any confluence to give us confidence to get into a trade render i love render render's doing good going sideways we could get another little pop to the upside look at the seven day gains on render 89 percent that's pretty good. At the end of the day, in my book, my my portfolio is nice and happy right now regarding render. I've been scaling into render quite a quite a bit, and yeah, at the end of the day, that's a good thing. If you've been scaling into render, if you understand the fundamentals behind it, you would be really, really, really bullish. Okay, guys, let's talk about charts. I know you're here to talk about Bitcoin. What is Bitcoin doing? Let's go see. Let's check it out. Bitcoin, as we speak, Bitcoin is pretty much going sideways. Um, yeah, chop action, sideways chop action. This is why some of these altcoins could be doing very, very well. And the range um, of which it's being traded is pretty tight, which is good. But I still feel like there is a bearish bias. Now, in the last little while, I mean minutes here, we're getting a little bit of a pump to the upside. And I bet you it's because of the FOMC meaning the interest rates. You know, when it's everything is priced in and, and the market anticipated that 25%. And this is why maybe, you know, the market's like, you know what, let, let me buy is a good time you know i it was already priced in i expected it i and there's no more risk now we have a little while until we get another announcement and let's do it let's go but at the end of the day i'm still convinced i'm still convinced that you know bitcoin needs to reset yes we can get a nice little pop to the upside and maybe test some liquidity at these levels but overall this bearish divergence is still in play and as we speak we're getting uh very close to this trend line once again and if we get rejected we're continuing down so at the end of the day we're paying attention at this trend line many traders are looking at this trend line as we speak because you can see it's a clear clear channel to the upside and if we do get rejected, I'm anticipating getting down to oversold territories down here at the bottom. And that's when you'll see these momentum oscillators reset on the four hour, maybe even the MACD and so on. The MACD is still looking bearish, guys. 
So my conviction is that we could get a little bit of a pop in the short term, even on the MACD, it looks like we could get a little bit of a pop. But in, in the grand scheme of things, it still looks bearish in my book. We could eventually start rolling over. But this range is definitely real, right? It might give you another opportunity to get into a short position if that's your thing. And it might give you an opportunity to go long if we start to rock it to the top, right? So the only way we're going to invalidate this bearish divergence is if we create a higher high on the RSI. I'm going to spend a little bit of time here uh, with Bitcoin because I think that it could get a lot of people emotional here, especially if we start pumping up to these levels at about 23,800 or 20, yeah, about there, 23,000 previous highs. If we get to previous highs, you're going to see a lot of people kind of uh, fearful, either FOMO and start buying in and, you know, hoping, or we might get a rejected, a rejection real quick and then come back down, fulfill this bearish divergence. So with that said, guys, um, I just want to let you know that if the R side does create a higher high on the RSI. So let me paint that in here for you. So you can keep that as reference. If the RSI goes up and makes a higher high, we're invalidating the bearish divergence. However, as long as we stay downward sloping and the price action continues going upwards or sideways, it means that we're gonna eventually roll over. So we need to pay attention to that one because at the end of the day, this is just another opportunity to backtest this breakdown and maybe continue with that short position, accumulating a short position, right? We're back at our entry, which is totally fine. I don't mind because I have a quick and tight stop loss right above here. If I get stopped out, no big deal. No big deal. Okay. We, we're, we're up on many trades, uh, short trades already on, um, on altcoins. Altcoins have been really good to us in our short positions just lately. I want to look at near protocol today, guys. All right, guys, let's talk about near protocol. As we speak, near protocol is getting a little bit of a retracement. However, this short term bounce is definitely all about that FOMC meeting regarding the 25% interest rate hike. And at the end of the day, I think the market definitely, definitely priced that, that interest rate hike into the market, into the price of near protocol and many of these altcoins. And this is why maybe now the price is getting a little bit of that pump because the risk is not there anymore we know what's going to be happening we have a, a few days before we get another announcement regarding feds and inflation and interest rates and cost of living and so on and so forth and at the end of the day this is an, a good time to be buying the dip for a short-term pump however guys be very very careful because we still have this bearish divergence throughout the entire market including near protocol let's look at this rsi the rsi is currently still downwards trending while the price action has been going up and finally broke trend and is looking for a break of structure that is uh, at about two dollars if we break below two dollars i'm going to start looking for buy the dip opportunities at the golden pocket value area low um 786 the 886 but this bounce is really concerning me at the moment because i think a lot of people might fomo into this pr green price action and not be aware that it's just all about the the neutral state of the of the meeting of the 25 percent basis points and at the end of the day it was a slight hawkish um scenario with the fact that it might uh that the feds might come up with more interest rates um in in march so maybe another 25 percent right so i think it's too early to worry about march but at the end of the day we can see that overall the momentum is looking a little slumpy and this little pullback or this little bounce that we're getting is could be very temporary there's no bullish divergence on the rsi look at the bottoms of these rsi and the rsi in the four hour didn't even get into oversold territory so once we get it to oversold, that's when I would start to be looking for buy the dip opportunities. So we need to completely reset and get down to these levels. And then we can start looking for buy the dip opportunities. Let's quickly get into the daily. The daily is looking, uh, you know, not bad. We got a nice capitulation here with a nice candle to the upside recovery looking good but nonetheless look at the divergence on this rsi and i'm expecting a continuation to the downside we can definitely back test this breakdown okay this breakdown could be back test and we could definitely get up to about two dollars and fifty cents before we maybe start rolling over again maybe get a double top with the continuation of this bearish divergence would mean that we would get a fatter rejection and a fatter dump to the downside which would give us a nice buy the dip opportunity down again to about a dollar eighty 
maybe a dollar 55 or so and then dollar cost average once again packing those bags now i also want to see this daily rsi reset to the bottom of the range again back to these levels start doubling out here let's look for bullish divergence once we spot any bullish divergence or sign of momentum exhaustion from the bears we're going to quickly quickly shift our lens to being bullish and start buying the dip right now this could definitely get a bounce here let's talk about fibonacci for a second we got a rejection or a bounce right off the 38 percent retracement level of fibonacci which indicates to me that it's only a breather that we're getting so far it's a bullish thing in a way if we get a bounce here and we continue with support around these zones around this level this could mean that at the end of the day, we're going to up to higher levels. Now, I want you to be aware on the daily, we didn't get up to the 200 EMA, right? On the daily EMA, we didn't get there, okay? So it could act as a magnet and quickly get the price up to that level and then eventually get that capitulation, which is very, very um, possible at the same time still fulfilling this bearish divergence. As long as the bearish divergence is still creating lower highs or down, downward sloping, that would entail that we're still diverging based on the price action versus the momentum. And that means that we could get a little bit of a, uh, a dip. Now look at the MACD. I know the MACD is a lagging indicator, which means that the actual histogram bars and the data that is collected takes time before it actually can be visually represented but nonetheless look at this bearish uh bearish signs on the emas red histogram bars on the emas this could be an opportunity for many individuals to finally take some profits if you were in a a long position um especially like what we did we started buying here if you look at my previous videos on near protocol we talked about near protocol quite a bit um in the last little while i think we um three weeks ago we talked about it right here and we talked about going bullish definitely we talked about it quite a bit in the past too previous to that two months ago so about every month we talk about near protocol and around these levels one buy, buy the dip opportunity here out of this breakout and then buy the dip here and spotting dollar cost average was a great strategy now we're in profits so you can expect that people that accumulated here now could be kind of shaking in their pants be thinking you know what let me take some profits before we roll over and that's what you might see is profit taking right around this zone so be very careful here going long make sure you set those stop losses in, pre in preparation that the market could definitely come back down and quickly reverse based on the loss of momentum okay guys so um 38 retracement is just a breather if we continue getting support we could get that bounce if not if we break uh the 0.5 fib which is the previous low we would get a, a break of structure which would give us an indication that we're coming down to lower levels um deeper retracements golden pocket 786 886 retracements and buying the dip opportunities for near protocol and of course if you're bullish that's what you want to get into is nice fire sales on these bullish projects that you believe in that have good fundamentals all right guys so that's what i got to say about near protocol at the end of the day expect an update when i do see something interesting in the charts right now it's very sideways very risky um, profit taking is definitely on the agenda for myself and looking for great opportunities to buy the dips throughout the market guys make sure that you come and visit us live 7 30 eastern daily we talk about crypto we talk about charts we talk about news and we try to find opportunities throughout the market where we can capitalize on any volatility and of course if you have any projects that you want me to cover that is a great time to get along with the community talk about some some good projects that you're interested in and i'm glad to give you some ta and give you my thoughts about it and of course follow me on those socials guys i'm there each and every day trying to give you some of that alpha all right thank you for stopping by take care have a good one and don't forget buy the dip